I remade prehistoric mobs in Minecraft. Let's turn this cow into a woolly mammoth. You're gonna need some way bigger legs, buddy. Double up that torso and make it bigger for the size we need as well. Make sure everything is covered in thick fur. Make the head bigger and then we'll start on the trunk and the tusks. We can make it a pair of thick long tusks like so. A little more detail to the head and done. Let's get this mammoth inside some proper ice caves. Woohoo! That guy is one big beefy boy. Look at the fur hanging off of this fella. The most concerning thing about this guy is those massive husks. Those things could knock down a tree. I've got an idea to put those to the test. We'll take this villager back to his prehistoric ancestry as a caveman. Give him a little hunch as he's still learning how to stand up straight. Change out those cotton clothes for animal skin. Add a cool tooth necklace from all of his hunts. Fix up that face a little. Now he'll need a beard and some wild hair. Finish it off with a heavy club and send him into the world. Pull off this caveman down here. This guy looks iconic. Exactly the type of beard and hair we'd expect. And he's got his big caveman club. Let's see if that club can take down a mammoth. The mammoth versus the caveman. And he's tossing spears and he got flattened. Oh my word. Oh, he's back up again. The mammoth faces him again. Another spear comes out. He hasn't used his club yet. And he got flattened again. A spear versus a honking beast like that. Oh my goodness. Oh, boy, our caveman is gone. Yikes. An army of cavemen. That's a lot of spears, but that's a lot of squish as well. They're fighting back as best as possible, though. Three cavemen got squished, and they're back up, but they did take down the mammoth. This is exactly how they must have done it back in the day. Now we'll make this ocelot into a saber tooth. Your head's gonna need to be a little bit higher up with some thick legs for lunging and running at full speed. Look at that little head with his beefy big cat body. Now let's fix the head. Make it bigger and bulkier with a huge pair of fangs for taking down some prey. And no need for that super long tail anymore. Pretty sure these saber tooths enjoy the cold as well. And you can always tell a saber tooth bagger by those saber teeth. And a nice big upper body to keep it warm from the freezing temperatures. Big upper body means a lot of extra meat. The exact type of thing a caveman would want to get his hands on. So let's see how well this saber tooth can defend itself against this caveman who's clearly tossing those spears over and over and have knocked him a few times. And there goes a claw attack that rips up that caveman. No wonder all of his clothes are ripped all over after all those spicy claws coming at him. And no saber teeth. Oh, they're getting close. Maybe they're friends. Oh, they're definitely not friends. Down goes the caveman. But if the tribe goes on the hunt together, oh, the saber tooth is having none of it. Already goes after them right away. Oh, yikes. That saber tooth comes in and already wipes out half the tribe. Only three are left to actually throw anything at this saber tooth. They're all getting knocked and now there's just one left. Oh, boy. Yep, the tribe better be ready next time they go out on a hunt. Oh, my God. Goodness, but the one caveman still survives and manages to take down the saber tooth. A chicken is perfect to make a dodo bird. Dodos were definitely bigger than chickens and had way longer necks. So we'll put some meat on his bones and give him a neck curving up to a head with a bigger beak and those eyes. No thoughts, no brain, only dodo. Look at this clueless little guy. Now these dodo birds were always very curious to me because those wings compared to that body definitely suggest this guy's not going to be very good at flying anywhere and he doesn't have very sharp teeth and not a super long beak and so these guys just look kind of hopeless which you know kind of makes sense might be the reason why they didn't really survive the prehistoric era if we plop in a caveman here i bet this oh the bird is confused he's very confused He's actually frightened. I don't think he knows what to do. We toss in more cavemen and they're throwing spears at this dodo bird. And the dodo bird doesn't know what to do. Still running around and not fighting back at all. Completely, utterly knocked. Yep, those birds were definitely useless. Now let's make a diadon out of this pig. These animals were huge. So we'll need to reshape those legs for power and speed. Make it a little bit more top heavy for ramming into things and add some chompers into a long snout. Some ears, a little fluff. I would not want to meet this guy in real life. And these guys are definitely smaller than their name makes them appear. Those teeth are sharp. That mouth is big and the muscles on this guy are immaculate. 
And if my science is correct, then all research points to these guys being pretty quick, too. And if a caveman were to find himself out in the open all alone, that is what a diadon could do. Knock him up, back up, charge him again, Blansky, send him flying. Hopefully he doesn't land on one of these bone spikes, so he's not gonna have the chance he's gonna go down that fast. That is one fast pig. I mean, died on. This iron golem can become our ground sloth. Ground sloths didn't hang from trees to eat. They just stood up. So let's give this guy some extra height. We'll give it a muzzle instead of a flat face, extra long arms with clawed fingers for tearing off those leafy greens, and a big old tail for balance. Now these ground sloths are are absolutely honking beasts. And they look a lot like normal sloths, but they're absolutely huge in comparison. This guy's tail is nearly as big as me. And they move basically in slow motion. Oh, darn it. I forgot our diadon is still here. That's not gonna be good. Guess we're gonna find out who wins between a diadon and a ground sloth. The diadon actually is able to knock this ground sloth up, which is pretty impressive because that's gotta be quite a bit of weight on that guy. Oh boy, but uh, that diadon just got knocked. The weight comes with a big, heavy hand, apparently. Wouldn't want to face that guy in a slap contest. Let's turn this wolf into a woolly rhinoceros. As with all prehistoric mobs, bigger is better. Add that bulk. A nice dark brown base for the super woolly coat. Some strong legs to support a super heavy body, just like a regular rhino. And we'll need to add a set of horns to its head with the large curved one up front. A few finishing touches and this woolly rhino is ready to go. Let's march this woolly rhinoceros back down into this boneyard next to these cavemen. Oh, he's already under attack by these cavemen, but I don't think they're gonna be able to manage. That chunk of meat right there could take a lot of spears before he goes down. Boom, cavemen up in the air, cavemen back down. Bam, another one up and down. These guys are taking hit after hit from this rhinoceros down that one goes oh yikes and there goes the other one that rhinoceros can take a punch there's only one other prehistoric mob i know that can swing a punch hard enough to knock a woolly rhinoceros let's see which one of these guys comes out on top in a head-to-head -head fight the rhinoceros is able to knock up our ground sloth but not quite because those fists are heavy and the woolly rhinoceros is knocked from existence. This mushroom will be a glypto armadillo, AKA a glyptodon. Lower that head and body down so its proportions are shorter. We'll make it a super armored shell for its back to protect it. Some proper feet, a head with a nice hard helmet. And this tail is gonna be super strong when whipping back and forth to bash its enemies. These glypto armadillos are chunky with massive shells on the back. I'm sure that's gonna help protect him from any hostile mobs around. Oh, but our ground sloth is slowly making his way over to try and take down our armadillo here. Oh, boom! We even heard it hit. It didn't sound like much. I wonder if it hurt his fists. The armadillo's not fighting back at all, though. Ground sloth is trying, though. Oh my goodness. Gracious. That was brutal. I was expecting it to hold up a little more than that. Starting to wonder how that guy went extinct. Let's turn this spider into a trilobite. Flatten out those legs and shrink them on down. We'll turn the main body into segments in the pointed shape of a trilobite. Then make that flatter head with antenna coming off of the sides. And we've got our first prehistoric water mob. Our trilobite. These guys are tiny. But don't let that deceive you. They can be extremely devious. Specifically because even though they enjoy the water, they like to burrow underneath the sand in the water. Grab a drowned and bring him in. Our trilobite already disappeared. I'm not sure if you caught that. He dug into the ground over here, popped back out. He's moving too fast for us to even keep an eye on him. There he is. He's got a dig burrowing right there. Pop up and bam, the drowned goes down and our trilobite returns to his peaceful place floating in the water probably absorbing some sun a salmon can be the base for us to make a plesiosaur obviously we need to make this way bigger with a super long neck plus some larger fins for moving through the water and a long tail to match the rest of its length add some chompers to that mouth and give it some color with a cool stripe pattern and shading these guys look like a cross
cross between a sort of shark and one of those long neck dinosaurs. These plesiosaurs are pretty sweet and they look pretty friendly. Minus the extremely sharp teeth on the front of them. Now I'm not totally sure if these prehistoric water animals really truly got along with each other or not, but there is only one way to find out. Bring in another trilobite and see if they decide to be friends or munch each other down. They've seen each other. It looks like they, oh no, the trilobite burrowed. It means he's trying to attack. There he is. He's taking him on the side right there. Oh my goodness. Wait, but our plesiosaur grabbed him somehow. It looks like our trilobite has the advantage though because our plesiosaur doesn't see him until he's already attacked. No matter what this plesiosaur does, the trilobite has the upper hand consistently. Burrowing down, jumping up, biting that belly, causing our plesiosaur to thoroughly freak out in the process. But our trilobite has disappeared now. It looks like maybe our trilobite is completely full after biting off chunks of that belly. Maybe he's gone away for a lunch nap or something. Let's turn this guardian into the ruler of the prehistoric seas, the Megalodon. This body shape may look like a shark, but the Megalodon had a massive bite radius and outsized any modern day shark. We're gonna need lots of teeth, though not all 276 of the Megalodons. Color in this king and he's ready to rule the ocean. One of the coolest animals ever. Our prehistoric shark, the Megalodon. These guys are huge. Even a fin hit by this guy could knock you unconscious. Wouldn't want that, so I'm gonna keep my distance. But we need to find out which prehistoric ocean mob comes out on top. We've got our plesiosaur, and we also have got our trilobite. Our trilobite instantly goes underneath and it looks like it's our plesiosaur that gets taken to the surface first for a bite, but our megalodon is here for some action. Dives down for a bite on that plesiosaur, takes him to the surface for a bite as well. Our trilobite gets mixed up in the heat of it and goes back down, but our megalodon dives down and takes a bite out of him underneath. Oh my goodness, the plesiosaur and the trilobite are on the run over there. The plesiosaur is taking bite after bite after bite. The Megalodon is taking him through some sort of spin routine right now. This plesiosaur isn't doing too well. Oh my goodness, that's the last remnants of our trilobite. And the plesiosaur is the last one standing here, at least between the two of them. And down goes our plesiosaur as well. The Megalodon absolutely dominates. I think if a sloth ever ran into our Megalodon, that sloth would have a tough time avoiding those teeth.